Chris McLean is a sociopath. Chef is his caretaker. Izzy is a psychopath pretending to be insane. Don is actually just Sherlock Holmes. Mal is actually Mike's safe space. Heather wants to be the hero, and Ezekiel is a confused, highly anemic, malnourished, obsessive golem. Over the past 1.5 years, I have diagnosed, analyzed, theorized, vivisected, and beaten in the dead horse of the psychological profiles that are the stereotyped members of the Total Drama casts. But throughout all of this, hyperfan Sierra thought she could just slip under the rug. I get comments about the usual suspects, Alejandro, Lindsay, and what the f***? I also get lots of tweets about various ideas and who to diagnose next, and please do follow me at the Theorizer YT on Twitter because I will see every single thing you send me there, and my Twitter is actually an extremely valuable place to know everything going on with my channel. Well, it's my main contact method, but here, now, today, I'm taking on Sierra, because she's nuts and needs to be dissected like the beast she is. I need her backstory, motivation, and diagnosis. <laughs> Hello, I'm the Theorizer. Might as well call me Dr. Pseudoscience or something. We first meet Sierra in the true Total Drama Action Finale. She is discovered by Blainley and is reluctantly allowed to be the field interviewer for the Total Drama segment on Celebrity Manhunt. Sierra very quickly shows obsessions over the main cast and has particularly fallen in love with Cody, possibly because of the boy band he was in with Trent, Harold, and Justin. After aiding them on a little adventure, she is invited to join the cast in the next season of Total Drama. She does, and the entirety of Total Drama World Tour witnesses her manage to do things that are superhuman and physically impossible. She is a superhuman stalker. She has dedicated the past couple years of her life to a blog, which details the lives of the Total Drama cast, and I must say, she's got skill. She impersonates various individuals so she can contact family and friends of the cast and learn more about them. Eventually, Chris snaps on her, and Sierra is subdued, only for her to redirect even harder at Cody. She's smart. She is immune to Alejandro as well, something only seen in the hyper-intelligent psychopath known as Izzy. Funny enough, it was Izzy who was Sierra's prime informant for all this information. Just more evidence for Izzy's psychopathic genius. In the first episode of Total Drama World Tour, we get a taste of Sierra's omnidisciplinary skill set. She weaves a boat out of reeds in a physically impossible span of time. In another episode, she has skills in German face slapping or something, and she wins the challenge. She seems immune to pain. Based on scent alone, Sierra tracks down a wedding dress in the Niagara Falls episode. She displays superhuman talent after superhuman talent. And I have determined that it is because she has somehow become so obsessive, and so delusional, and so disturbed, that she has managed to access parts of her brain usually dormant for most humans. You know those stories of people who get a traumatic brain injury and they suddenly have perfect pitch? Or those people who panic to save a loved one and lift impossible amounts of weight to do so based on pure adrenaline? Or even Izzy, who had a plane land on her which returned her intelligence? Well, I mean, that was sort of faked. I discussed that before, but the point is, the brain can do crazy things. Lucy, while a supernatural film, isn't dramatically too, too, too far off, aside from, well, the supernatural part. Sierra's brain has done this. I'd say she has that stereotypical thing you see in movies where the unintelligent person is super strong. As sort of offensive as these sound, I believe I've heard people call it <laughs> crackhead determination or retard strength. YouTube, please don't demonetize me. I didn't say it, they did. Now, of course, with Sierra, I'd say she has something akin to that. Her brain and personality are so focused and everything else is numb, which releases chemicals that increase other areas to do what it thinks is protecting her or her bay. I'd say that, but it'd be untrue because of how intelligent she actually is. The problem, then, is that all of her skill and intelligence has been forcefully redirected towards her total drama obsession. In All Stars, she begins to hallucinate, and her obsession evolves into, like, some sort of next-level psychosis. What Sierra needs is a good head thwack to fix parts of her brain, or, you know, 
a lobotomy. This strength is very obviously a result of the insanity and there needs to be a direct trade. When she needs to save her love, it triggers. The other cast members intuitively know this as well. Everyone thinks they will die falling over Niagara Falls, which we later see they probably wouldn't somehow, and Cody screams that he will allow Sierra to kiss him if they all live. She suddenly gets a freakish skill set and saves everyone in like an instant. Then she semi-molests his face. Another one is when she kicks and punches sharks later on in the show like it's nothing. And Cody was nowhere to even be seen? Chris McLean's massive plane explodes right behind her and all that happens is a temporary wheelchair and hair disintegration. Even in a wheelchair, she still manages to wheel into the water not two episodes later and give an aggressively inaccurate Heimlich maneuver to a shark. There are more, many more, so many more instances of her delusion. She sings a song later in the show about how she repeatedly auditioned to get on Total Drama and now she will never leave Cody alone. She has developed a clear obsession with him. Obsessive love disorder? We discussed this a few months back in my theory on Mr. Krabs in which I concluded that he has objectophilic OLD from a lack of childhood love due to poverty and piracy. Obsessive love disorder is the clear diagnosis, and it's a severe, severe case. She almost sees Cody as a possession. In All Stars, Cameron becomes her target of obsession. She sees Cody in him even to the smallest extent, and yet, she begins to hallucinate that Cameron is Cody. She develops this obsession, and she is booted from the show after kidnapping mutated rats and claiming them as her children. Her delusion and lack of a cell phone promises her a perfect life. Sierra is the wife, Camote is the husband, and the rat babies are her children. This is the sort of acid trip that's going on in Ezekiel's mind. If there were any way to describe the detachment going on in Ezekiel, Sierra is a good example. Her mind is what his body is. Devastating. Tragic. Obsessive love disorder, obsessive love strength, obsessive love delusion. Sierra is not who we see in the show. What we see is an extremely smart and skillful individual who has had something in her life snap her into this obsessive state of mind. We see how easy it is for her to redirect at Cameron. Cody was just an unlucky random target. Something caused her to act like this, and it has amplified her skills to a superhuman status. She is stuck and needs neurosurgery or medication or something to fix her psychosis, or not? I mean, she was going to win Total Drama World Tour. The writers had to disqualify her because of her brutal skill set. This is the issue. It's confusing to onlookers. Cody doesn't actually know Sierra. Only this Sierra. No, it's not identity dissociation, though. Her skills led to victory, but madness cut her off at fourth place. It's a tragic life. She needs something to return her to normal, because then she could have had just as good a chance. Less delusion, less amplified skill set, but no confusion. Sierra is just as good with less skill, but more sanity as she is like this, because sanity is key. Heal this woman for everyone's sake. Comment more instances of Sierra's craziness and comment your theories. Click like on the video too, it would help me. I still need to diagnose more people, but I'm done with these total drama theories for 2019 at least. Make sure to subscribe though, chances are I'll start up 2020 with another diagnosis or two on Spongebob and total drama before unloading on you with a metric ton of detective videos. Make sure to click the bell, notifications are important on YouTube, we'll see how the new rules regarding kids content will treat me. My audience is not intended for children, nor is it actually children, yes I have held polls and done analysis more thorough than the sign up age lie analytics. I've been fairly concerned about it since September, and then witnessed the mass panic back in November. Most people seem to either be fear-mongering or panicked, while others seem to just sweep it under the rug altogether, which is definitely not a good idea. It's better to talk about it and be a bit terrified than to ignore something like this, but things do seem to be looking up. Hopefully I won't have to cut out the cartoons altogether from my schedule. Until next time, I'm The Theorizer.